The man behind this poster was a guerrilla street artist not so long ago, but Shepard Ferry's work is growing increasingly familiar. He's turning a corner. Rita Braver has a portrait of an artist. My talent is more for making a, a bold, iconic graphic that is provocative. He's the artist of the moment. The one who created the famous Obama poster. He first gained fame for his street art. Yet his in-your-face style, brimming with political angst, has earned him a one-man museum retrospective at age 39. So you might expect Shepard Ferry to be brash and a bit full of himself, but... You know, the opportunity to share my work with people is, is what's rewarding, not so much the focus on me. In fact, Shepard Ferry is an earnest young man who seems to save his rage for his work. I'd describe my, my art as graphic art with social and, and political messages. Like Greetings from Iraq, based on a vintage postcard of the Geyser Old Faithful. You know, it's an explosion and there's war planes overhead. You know, I think that whether you're a, uh, a citizen of, of Iraq or a U.S. soldier, it's not, uh, not a pleasant place to be. Ferry's one-man show at the Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston features everything from wall-sized murals composed of anti-war, anti-materialism graphics to portraits of Ferry's idols in art, politics, and music. It's incredible to have so much work in one space. And I've always of course, the Obama portrait is featured prominently, along with a thank you note from President Obama. Your images have a profound effect on people, whether seen in a gallery or on a stop sign. So he's, he's acknowledging the power of, of public art. And, uh, he's a little subversive there, too. <laughs> Ferry, who's been arrested some 15 times, got the campaign's permission before making the posters. I didn't want to be a liability to Obama because I do have a record uh, of being arrested for street art. It became the image of the campaign. A Time magazine cover, hundreds of thousands of posters, and four original collages, including both this one and another just installed at the Smithsonian's National Portrait Gallery. Ferry says he hasn't made money off the Obama image because he plowed profits back into producing more posters. But now he's locked in a legal battle with the Associated Press, which owns the photo on which Ferry's creation is based and wants to be paid. I think fair use in the way that I've interpreted it. And if you look at uh, pop art over the last 50 years, I think that uh, that reinforces um, that assertion. When you look at that image of Obama, you don't see an Associated Press photograph. You see something that is absolutely and distinctively Shepard Ferry. The museum's director, Jill Medvedow, says Ferry is just doing what many artists have done for years. I think the key here is the transformation of something from its original form into something absolutely altogether different. Is Medvedow says she wanted to stage a show of Ferry's work in part because he expounds on so many artistic traditions, from Soviet realism to Andy Warhol-style multiples. Like many artists who have come before him, he is playing with some big issues, war and peace, propaganda, public space. Ferry creates his work in his Los Angeles studio. I see things and they give me an idea and then I figure out, well, how am I going to transform this to what I want and how it's going to best convey my idea. Ferry studied illustration at the Rhode Island School of Design. He grew up in South Carolina, the son of a doctor, a rebellious kid heavily into skateboarding and board designing. In the early 80s, he became fascinated with the professional actor and wrestler known as Andre the Giant. What was it about that face that somehow spoke to you? <laughs> well, I think that the face is very unique. 
he, at a glance, was both sinister and goofy. For years, he plastered his distinctive Andre stickers and posters all over the world, often adding the word obey. The work developed a cult following captured in the documentary Andre the Giant Has a Posse. It was never intended to get as big as it did. It was just an inside joke between a friend and I. Even Stephen Colbert paid tongue-in-cheek homage to the Andre campaign. Until I saw these, sometimes I forgot to obey. <laughs> and then I would be like walking down the street and I'd go, oh yeah, yeah, obey, obey what I'm told to do, you know? In fact, Ferry says it's all part of his credo, question everything. I wanted to get people to have to confront the concept of obedience, so I started using the word obey. And question it. Yeah, and question it. Ferry has always challenged authority, often putting his work up clandestinely. But along with the museum show, he was invited to put up public art all over Boston. The mayor even let him decorate City Hall. What's it like to be an outside artist who's suddenly being welcomed by the inside world? Well, it's pretty, it's pretty surreal. Even more surreal when on the day of the exhibit's official opening two weeks ago, Boston police arrested Ferry on the nine-year-old vandalism warrant for putting up unauthorized art. He pled not guilty, but still faces further court action. You know, I can justify where I put my work as, you know, part of, uh, you know, ex an extension of the concept of freedom of speech. It's uh, not appropriate for only advertisers to occupy, you know, the graphic communication of public space. But Ferry is also a proud capitalist. Place. He employs 20 people, producing not only fine art, but also album covers, book jackets, and movie posters. His studio just created this new advertising campaign for Saks Fifth Avenue. Married and the father of two, he dismisses critics who say he has sold out. I'd be starving or unable to, uh, unable to proliferate my work if I didn't have some source of income. But today, Shepard Ferry seems poised for the kind of fame few American artists have achieved in recent years. Is this work that will hold up in another 25, 50, 100 years? I think so. I think that these images are going to end up as some of the iconic images of the beginning of the 21st century. You hope that people just say, okay, he was the right artist for his time? Yeah, I would, I would hope so. I don't think I could hope for anything better than that. I think, yeah, I think that'd be pretty great.